Hi, my name is Dr. Leslie Horson. I'm here to talk to you about how you can use some simple tools to monitor your horse's health. These tools can be also used to assess your horse's responses to training and recovery after competition. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Tongarong people, the traditional custodians of the land on which I and my horses live, and I pay my respects to their elders, both past and present and emerging. At the most basic level, we have legal and moral obligations to monitor and act on our horse's health. Some sports require health monitoring. For example, endurance competition in Australia requires a three-day temperature log in non-Hendra areas and a 10-day temperature log for horses coming from areas where Hendra is endemic. The log has to be filled in and submitted before you are permitted to enter the competition base. With contagious diseases and arboviruses becoming more prevalent, I think we can expect to see more of this type of biosecurity monitoring. Those of us involved in work with our horses can use monitoring to help prepare our horses for competition and promote recovery after competition. The latter sets your horse up better for their next competition. The equipment you need to monitor health using vital signs is fairly basic. The first one is a watch with a second hand. I get cheap ones from department stores so that when the battery runs out or I invariably drop it, step on it, sit on it, lose it, I can just get another one. You will also need a stethoscope. There are a multitude available online and you do not to get a, need to get an expensive one. You can expect to pay around $30 for a decent stethoscope that will meet your needs. You should also get a digital thermometer that is a quick read. Again, it does not need to be expensive. Just like a barometer measures the weather, as a moment in time, vital signs and monitoring vital signs can give us a snapshot of what is going on inside the horse. And we can even use those results to predict what might happen in the near future. Like monitoring weather, we don't have to worry about variations that fall within the usual range for each vital sign, but just note the trends. If we do get an outlier result, that is a reading that is outside the reference rate ranges that we have, then we might want to consult with an, our veterinarian. Some horses will be outliers for certain measurements, but they are very rare. That said, there are some groups of horses, for example, race horses, that have parameters that are slightly different than the whole horse population. These parameters are usually in the area of things like red blood cell counts, etc., and outside the remit of the vital signs we are covering in this presentation. Horses are not only individually different, but the vital sign measurements can change during the day. This is called diurnal variation. All animals do it. Horses are very sensitive to, to the environment around them. Even horses that look perfectly calm may have increased heart rates if they think there is something of interest in their sensory field. Exercise of any sort not only increases heart rate and respiratory rates, but also body temperature. That is why it is important to take your baseline readings at the same time in relatively the same circumstances every day. So you know what within normal limits means for your horse. In this graph, we can see Teddy is within normal limits most of the time for his body temperature. The upper limit is 38.5, while the lower limit is 36.9. 
Admittedly, he gets a bit cool sometimes, which is not anything to worry about in a mature horse who lives outside 24-7. It is when the reading is way out of normal limits, say a full half degree, especially higher temperatures that are above 38.5, that I would worry. High temperatures are indicated when there is an inflammatory process going on. The first vital sign we're going to talk about is mucous membranes. Mucous membranes are very useful for getting an idea of what is going on within your horse, mainly because they don't have hair, so you can see them. They are also heavily populated with lots of tiny blood vessels, capillaries, so they can give us insight into the cardiovascular system. They are normally moist and lubricated in a healthy animal, so changes may indicate dehydration. They are not only success accessible, they signal the internal health of the horse. So when you're looking at the mucous membranes, you can look at either the upper or lower jaw, it doesn't really matter. But it is also worthwhile looking around the gum line over the teeth. Changes in that area can give you indications of systemic disease. As it says here in this slide, we want the mucous membranes to be pink and moist and a pale pink to pink colour. Changes from that pink to pale pink colour can indicate some fairly fundamental disease processes. <coughs> the mucous membrane of a horse that has finished exercising, has just finished doing strenuous exercise, will appear red, or we call it injected. This is normal they will resolve back to the bubblegum pink colour once the horse has cooled down and heart function returns towards resting levels. Monitoring how long this process takes can help you decide how fit the cardiovascular system is for the exercise that you have just demanded of your horse and also will indicate how hydrated your horse is. A red line at the gum line can indicate a problem with the horse's internal state, uh, often linked with toxemia. In other words, there's toxin in the blood, and that is linked to bad colics and poisonings, etc. A yellow tinge of the mucous membranes is a fairly uh, pathognomonic for something going wrong with the liver, and the liver is responsible for getting it processing all the toxins and foodstuffs so a yellow tinge means that it's not filtering out some of the uh, toxins that color the blood and consequently the mucous membranes uh, appear yellow Capillary re refill time is another way to assess the cardiovascular system and makes use of all those capillaries that are in the mucous membranes of the gums. The theory is that you blanch the mucous membrane with your finger by applying pressure onto the membrane. This squashes the blood out of the capillaries under, the under your finger and then you count how long it takes to come back. In practice, you want to aim for the same place in each horse. The recommendation is over the last upper incisor. Note how my left hand is coming up under the lip. Don't grab over the nostrils. Horses don't like that. Now, you can practice this process on your fingers. by using the fingertips, which are a good mimic of your mucous membranes. So you just 
press on your fingers and, and count how long it takes for the blood to return to where you pressed. And that is a measure of whether you have got good blood pressure or not. Causes of delayed capillary refill time include dehydration, cardiovascular compromise, severe hemorrhage, severe pain, and severe cold. Jugular refill is when you put some pressure on the jugular vein that sits inside the groove that runs down the side of your horse's neck to the point that you raise the blood vessel up. The vein should bulge up within one, one second. The skin tent is even more simplistic. You basically just pull out a piece of skin right on the point of the shoulder and make sure that it goes back flat in under a second. I might add, I'm not, these videos are on loop. I'm not pinching and prodding poor Blossom over and over. She would even Blossom wouldn't stand for that. Both these systems, these techniques, do give you some idea of hydration status, but they are quite unreliable. Uh, and I would tend to rely more on the capillary refill time and use these as measures to confirm what I have uh, evaluated in terms of my capillary refill time. Heart rate is the easiest way to get a quick understanding about what is happening with your horse. I use it every day at the races. The heart does not lie. Common causes for elevated heart rates include dehydration, pain, temperature, i.e. high temperatures, the horse is distressed, emotionally aroused, and or it has been recently very active physically. As you'll see in this picture, I've marked where the heart is approximately on drama and pulled her leg forward to try and show that it's actually tucked up behind that big triceps muscle edge that demarks the back part of the forelimb as it goes on into the chest. It's about half a hand width above the elbow when the horse is standing. And the good news is most horses have a little flat spot where you can nestle in the head of the stethoscope and that will give you a good access to the heart sounds. You can listen to the heart on the right side. It's a similar position as the left, but because horses are asymmetrical, just like us, the heart is more on the left side and it's easier to hear on that side. Taking your heart rate. It's much easier to use a watch than trying to juggle a phone at the same time. When you put your stethoscope on, make sure the earbuds are facing towards your nose. Next, put the bell of the stethoscope onto the prescribed area. It's about three finger widths above the elbow, snug up against the triceps muscle. And as I said, most horses have a lovely little flat spot there that you can rest the bell of the stethoscope in. You will hear two main sounds, lup up. Count the lup up complex as one beat. In some horses, particularly fit horses, you might hear three or four sounds. So two extra sounds in addition to the lup dup. Only count the lup dup complex as a beat. 
count for 15 seconds and multiply by four to get beats per minute. You get very good at the four times table. Traps for new players. Horses' hearts are much slower than ours. So you have to be patient as you begin to get your ears trained to hear it. I sometimes have to shut my eyes in order to concentrate and focus my attention on the heart sounds. Don't start counting until you are sure you can hear the heart. Double counting, i.e. counting lup as one beat and dub as another, is quite common when you first start out. If you get 60 beats per minute or above and your horse is half asleep, then you have probably double counted. Calm down and try again. Heart rate can also be used to find out if your conditioning program is working. The resting heart rate does not go down as the horse gets fitter because, fun fact, their resting heart rate is defined by genetics, unlike humans where, who will drop their resting heart rate as they get fitter. The time taken for the horse to return to its resting heart rate becomes shorter as it gets fitter. Race horses can achieve heart rates of over 250 beats per minute during a race, but will have returned to around 80 to 90 beats per minute within 15 to 20 minutes. It's just remarkable. Monitoring horse rate heart rates after dressage tests have also shown that dressage is quite demanding on the horse. So by monitoring heart rates, we get a objective measure of A, how fit the horse is, and B, how strenuous the workout has been. The pulse is the surge of blood in the arteries when the heart contracts and pumps the blood out into the body's circulation. It is essentially a measuring the same thing as listening to the heartbeat. So the count should be in the same realm as the heart rate. However, the pulse is just a single surge. You won't get the lubbed up. I find pulse rates challenging at times and I certainly think it's useful to know how to do them uh, in the event that you have to check on the health of your horse and you haven't got access to a stethoscope. However, it is difficult to make more than a educated guess using pulse rates. In experienced hands, the quality of the pulse can give some insight into the health of the horse's cardiovascular system. But in terms of monitoring, we really just use it to measure heart rate when we don't have a stethoscope. The easiest pulse point to find is the one that passes through a notch on the bottom side of the horse's big cheek. Run your fingers along the bony brim of the jaw until you feel a notch in the bone. Gently but firmly press on the structures. You can feel in the notch and then and they feel like cooked spaghetti tubes until you then need to lighten off until you feel the pulse. Remember horses' pulses are more like a slow wave than the sharp distinct pulse you can feel on your own pulse. Be patient. It takes a while to get the feel. And often just when you have it, the horse moves. There is a good video how to organize yourself so that you don't get bumped off the pulse point and the resources at the end of this presentation. Temperature. We normally take temperatures of horses rectally, keeping in mind that the rectal temperature of a horse is about one degree lower than the actual body core temperatures. Horses in normal circumstances are very efficient at keeping their body temperature 
within a tight range of normal limits. Increases in core body temperature occur with inflammation, exertion and overexertion, heat stress and distress. Decreases in core body temperature occur with extreme disease and anorexia. Please note that a horse that has exercised recently can have a, a temperature of up to 42 degrees, but it is important that that temperature gets back into with normal limits if any heat damage is to the tissues is going to be avoided. So taking the temperature, remember you are at the kicking end. Take, take your time. Have someone controlling the horse at the head, head end and rewarding the horse when it stands still. Make sure you're using one of those fast reading thermometers. The side you start on does not really matter. But if you are right-handed, you will find it easier from the left. Lubricate the thermometer. Target, the target area is tucked right up under the tail root. Some people advocate twisting the thermometer as you insert it, which I've never actually found very useful. What is important is that you angle the the thermometer towards the wall of the rectum. Otherwise, you're just measuring the temperature of the poo. The expression on my adopting the expression on my face in the first picture here is optional. The next vital sign we talk about is respiration. Horses have two phases to their breath. I find it easiest to watch the lower abdomen moving for 15 seconds and then multiplying by four. Horses will breathe faster than expected if they are in pain, if they've just exercised, if they are excited, fearful, or if they are heat stressed. The normal range of respiration rate for a resting horse is 12 to 16 breaths per minute. There are a couple of different ways to measure respiration. Some people advocate holding your hand under the nostril so that you can feel each expiration, each puff of breath and also you can obviously hear the breath going through the lungs with a using a stethoscope over the chest. I'll be honest, I don't find the nostril approach very useful, particularly as most of my horses won't stand there letting me hold my hand out there. They're looking for treats. So the next thing I want to talk about is listening for gut sounds. Gut sounds are the rumbles or borborygmi in the gut, which is the sound of the gas and fluid moving through the intestines. Different parts of the intestinal tract will sound different. As a rule of thumb, you should hear one to three borborygmi in a 60 second period, depending on the site. The exception to this rule is the ileocecal valve, which sounds like a toilet flush. One to two toilet flushes every two minutes is within normal limits. In listening to gut sounds, we divide the horse's abdomen into four parts. The first of these is the left quadrant, just in the hollow in front of the hip. We're essentially listening to the small intestine in this area. The next one 
just waiting for the photos to go through. The next one is the lower left quadrant. So this is the first quadrant in this picture. This is the second quadrant. This is the listening to the large intestine on the left side. The next one is the upper right quadrant as shown in this picture. This is probably one of the most important ones to listen to because it's monitoring the large intestine of the right side and the cecum. The cecum is a special structure at the end of the small intestines and is a common spot for colics to form, malfunctions of the proximal gut. It's the ileocecal valve, the valve between the ileum and the cecum, which sounds like a toilet flush. This is in the hollow just in front of the right hip bone, the tuber coxae. The lower right quadrant, is, quadrant again is large intestine. Apparently, the lowest point of the abdomen is a good place to check for sound. It sounds like waves hitting the shoreline. I don't know whether I've just been lucky, but I've never managed to hear that. The next area I want to talk about is digital pulses. Now, even though we are feeling for pulses, they are used for identifying problems in the feet, not to take the heart rate. It is the quality of the pulse that is the focus. Bounding and strong pulses indicate that there must be more flow, blood flow occurring, and such as associated with laminitis, abscesses, stone bruises, etc. In these pictures, they are where the yellow dots are. To feel the digital pulses, you palpate the blood vessels that travel over the top of the sesamoid bones or just below the sesamoid bones at the back of the fetlock going down onto the pastern. They are the yellow points in these pictures. Just like the pulse point under the cheek, you can palpate the little tubes that are the blood vessels with your finger pads. You do have to practice to get this sorted. I have more success with the vessels under the sesamoids down onto the pastens. Remember, the pulse is more like a wave than a clear thump. My rule of thumb is, if I can feel a pulse here, there is probably a problem. Sometimes you can get one side stronger than the other. This can help you identify which side of the foot the problem is. Apparently, you are not supposed to use your thumb to palpate digital pulses, as it has its own pulse. But I think this is a furphy because our resting pulse is much higher than the horse's and the quality of the pulse is different. So some take home messages. Practice makes perfect for both you and your horse. The more you can practice taking these measurements, the better you will become at them. You will also need to develop your eye. Watch your horse's movements, mental state and other behaviours so that you can establish what is normal for your horse. This is just a aid when memoir to show you what each vital signs within normal limits are. It will be provided in PDF form on the Project Hope Horse Welfare website. So I'd just like to say thank you to Janice Kirby for taking a lot of the pictures. Thank you to my stoic subjects 
and thank you most of all for listening. If you would like to pursue this further, here are a link to a whole lot of different videos that you can use to help develop your techniques in taking vital signs, measurements of your horse. Again, thank you very much for listening. Bye.